What is up, Bad Brood? Eric here with Team Batman. Welcome, guys, back to another edition of Bad Builds, where we take a look at some of the decks we are working on here at Team Batman, give you some ideas of what we're working on, uh, give you some new ideas for some decks, and hopefully get you to consider some cards that you hadn't really considered before. Uh, and I have a confession to make at the start of this video. Uh, yes, I have a really, really big secret. Well, maybe not such a big secret for you guys, but I am a tinkerer. I am a huge, huge tinkerer when it comes to this game. And while I do enjoy meta decks from time to time, they're just, they're boring to me. They generally are because you know what they do, you know what they're going to do, you know 95% of what to expect out of the decks. Um, if you try to be fringe with them, it either succeeds and it blows people away and then everyone knows, or it completely flops and you wonder, why didn't I just stick with the standard? Uh, of course, this has been the way since the, it's been that way since the very, very beginning of the game. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of Black Krillin. wasn't a huge fan of uh, Namekian Piccolo, uh, Orange Twenty when he came out, uh, any of the Cell decks when they came out. And while I did play a lot of those decks, while I did, uh, you know, do fairly well with them, and while I did understand what they did, it wasn't really fun to me. It didn't feel fun. I enjoyed the off decks, the stuff that people weren't expecting that could actually really, really surprise people. I mean, come on, I'm a guy who played Saiyan Gohan set one. If that doesn't tell you kind of how I approach decks in this card game, I don't know what really is going to. And my thought, when, especially when it came to this video, was there's Tau over here. There's Ascension over here. Tau likes to level really fast. But Unleashed is really, really boring. It's really predictable. Everyone knows what it's going to do. Uh, you have to run a certain suite of attached cards in order to get the benefit out of that. It's like, well, that kind of sucks. So I figured, what if we took Tau, and what if we still gave him his uh, MPPV win con, but at the same time, we made it possible for him to level quickly. And instantly, the idea of Red Ascension Tau kind of clicked. Um, actually, this deck was originally a Red Ascension Tien deck, which, of course, Tien is really, really good in anger-based decks. Uh, we've known that for a while. He's got a great suite of name cards. Uh, of course, got the ability to draw a bunch of cards. Um, at the same time, he mills a lot of cards off of his life deck. He takes a lot of self-damage to do a lot of damage to his opponent. Of course, that's a little bit of Tien's character, especially in the anime. But the one thing I didn't like is how self-destructive it was. Uh, and that's especially true in Red, where you don't have a lot of discard pile recursion. That was the hardest part. Uh, Tien's only real card that helps him rejuvenate is uh, Preparation, and only rejuvenates itself. So you'd have to rely on cards like uh, Red Blaze and Red Duck in order to rejuvenate. If you're milling cards off the top of your life deck, it's very, very liable that you're not going to end up getting into those because you'll just start milling them out. So I figured Tau would be a little bit more stable, a little bit more kind of consistent, uh, especially on the damage front, because once you get to that level 2 and that level 4, uh, you just throw out some attacks, uh, you're milling cards off your opponent's life deck, and unless they've got some kind of consistent rejuvenation, there's no guarantee they're going to actually get those cards back. Along with that, while I was building Tien, I figured He's got all this milling power. You want to get some of those cards back. Um, we do also like extra win conditions, so what if I threw in some Dragon Balls? Um, that idea carried over here to Mercenary Tau as well, because you know he's got uh, the ability to guarantee some of those attacks going through, um, especially in red when you've got cards like Red Static Shot, an uh, Optic Blast, and Sinister Choke. When you've got all these cards available that can uh, guaranteed get critical damage effects or capture Dragon Balls, uh, you know, you want to take uh, advantage of that, and sometimes you're not going to have opponents anger to lower. Uh, and we do like the additional win cons. While it makes the mastery riskier to use because you don't want to banish a Dragon Ball, uh, it's still an option here, and it's something I've actually been kind of enjoying. So today we are going to take a look at Red Ascension Mercenary Tau in a triple threat format. So we do still have the beats element, we've still got our MPPV, and we've got some Dragon Balls to work with here. Uh, while it may not be quite as consistent as the old Red Enraged Cooler used to be, or the Red Enraged Roshi that we've seen become uh, you know, so popular, then fall off and kind of become popular again, it's still an option to try out, and it's enjoyable. It's enjoyable to say the least. So let's go ahead and get right into it. 
And as I mentioned, it's a triple threat deck, so you need to have Dragon Balls in here somewhere. On this time around, we're going to try utilizing the Earth Dragon Balls. Now, we could use the Namek Dragon Balls, of course. Uh, we know how kind of much more stable they are, uh, particularly with Ball 1 preventing other Dragon Balls from being captured. And you've got great options here. Of course, uh, Namek Dragon Ball 3 lets you, you know, draw and cycle out your hand. Dragon Ball 5 gives you so much tech. Uh, of course, Namek Dragon Ball 7, we all know just how powerful that is, how much it can swing a game. But we're trying out the Earth Dragon Balls mainly because we want to mitigate the amount of dead cards that are in our hand. And of course, drawing into Dragon Balls during combat, especially when your opponent declares, is not necessarily fun. Especially, uh, once again, with the lack of Enraged and the ability to filter cards out of your hand. So, uh, Earth has access to Earth Dragon Ball 7, which allows you to place Dragon Ball and play from your hand. While it's not playing it, it's still getting an extra card out of your hand. It helps further along the Dragon Ball win con. Uh, and it soaks up an action, so you can kind of put a little more pressure on your opponent if they're waiting out for you to make a certain action. Along with that, you do have cards that get cards out of the discard pile. You have Earth Dragon Ball 3, which lets you draw cards from your discard pile and filter them back into your life deck. Along with that, you have Earth Dragon Ball 6, which at the end of combat, you can place it on the bottom to rejuvenate one. Uh, and, you know, that's getting extra cards back into the life deck. And there isn't a whole lot of rejuvenation in red, as I mentioned before. So having that uh, is extra, extra useful. Uh, you do have some other fun options here. Of course, we like destroying cards off the life deck, so Earth Dragon Ball 4 lets us do that. And along with that, we get some extra ally tech. Uh, Dragon Ball 2 lets us deal with some of those camping decks and help level them up, which uh, has been actually getting a little bit more popular at the moment. So that's definitely an option there. But we do have all seven Dragon Balls, and we like it as a win condition. The risk here is we have to play with the Red Ascension Mastery very, very carefully because there's no way to get Dragon Balls back in here. We're not playing Piccolo where we can get them out of the Banish Zone. Uh, we're not running Information Gathering so that way we can get one out of the Banish Zone. Uh, but it's an extra win condition nonetheless. We're gaining passive anger off the Mastery as it is at the end of every turn. So we do have options here. and I like running the Dragon Balls in here. It's fun. It may not be as useful as it is to TN, uh, milling off those cards and absorbing them with the Dragon Balls, but it's still useful nonetheless, and I enjoy it a lot. Of course, after the Dragon Balls, you guys know, I start with the setups, and we've got a few setups in here to really kind of keep things rolling with, uh, you know, with both our board state, with critical damage effects, and with anger, so there's a lot of benefit out of these setups. Of course, we have to start off with three copies of Red Relaxation. It's Red's best setup. You get that guaranteed critical damage effect, uh, which gains you extra stages uh, with the Ascension Mastery. You gain additional stages, of course, off the card itself, and you get to draw the bottom card of your discard pile, so it's still uh, plus one into your hand. Uh, it gives you the option to capture Dragon Balls. It gives you a little bit of uh, additional kind of tech there. It's just good. We all know why it's in here. Uh, I'm not really going to explain much else about it. Two copies of Red Bribe. Uh, now, we all saw this come out when uh, the Red Triple Threat Roshi was a really, really big deal. Uh, and it's still a really, really strong card right now, especially with Dragon Balls being so popular. Uh, Red Bribe lets you reutilize those Dragon Balls once they get out. And if you set this up with, uh, you know, with some of the other Dragon Ball place cards, like uh, if you place with Earth Dragon Ball 7 or with Dragon Radar, uh, of course, you can reutilize the Dragon Ball several times. Uh, this works great with Earth Dragon Ball 3 to get cards out of the discard pile. This works great with uh, Dragon Ball 4 so that you can mill your opponent a bunch during combat. There's a lot of potential with this, and I like being able to use this card again. I really, really do, especially with that sick looking promo that just came out. Be keep an eye out for those, I guess. Two copies of Red Destiny. Uh, this was, of course, very popular in Garlic Jr. builds and Roshi builds and whatnot. And it comes back here because Mercenary Tao doesn't have a high power level. He's an A throughout every single power level of every bracket. Uh, and it's going to take a lot of damage if you know your opponent gets some of those higher levels and starts to utilize some of the AT based attacks. Uh, Goku will run roughshod. Brawly will run roughshod. Gohan will run roughshod. There will be a lot of damage dealt. Uh, so we want to absorb off some of that. Uh, and Destiny helps us do that, plus it's two additional anger, and we love two anger cards in this deck. Uh, moves very, very quickly with those. Uh, I wanted to run three, but space is difficult, and I don't want to draw into dead cards, and with the Dragon Balls already in here, we do run that risk, so I wanted to avoid that. Uh, so two it is. Uh, and lastly, 
we have one copy of Dragon Radar, because the only copy we can run. Uh, if you're running Dragon Balls, you want to have it. Being able to pull any Dragon Ball out at any point is uh, super, super useful. Uh, and there's a number of different tech options you can have, depending on what's coming out or what you're facing off against. So, of course, we need to have it in here. After that, we're going to run into the events, which shouldn't really be too much of a surprise. And we're going to start off with one of my favorite name cards from the entire set, and that's Mercenary Tao's Puzzles. We have three copies of Tao's Puzzles in here, and that's just because it's good. It's really, really good. Uh, you can play it as a guaranteed block, whether your opponent has a sphere or not. That makes it super, super powerful. Uh, the risk you have here is, of course, you have to banish the top card of your life deck in order to play it, but uh, force your opponent to pass in their next action. So you're guaranteed to get out of combat with this one. Uh, it's really, really effective as a card. Uh, it's great as a block, and I've been having a lot of fun with this name card, honestly. If you haven't really considered trying out Tau, puzzles should probably be the number one incentive to really try it out, because it's it's a great, great name card. So much potential with it. Three copies of Stare Down. We do like the hand disruption in here. Uh, we do want to get some of those blocks out of the way so we can hit Guarantee with some of our more powerful attacks are out here. Get awesome critical damage effects, gain some anger. You guys know how it is. Uh, hand disruption is pretty obvious. And this is even stronger once we get up to level four. Because lo his level four power is a guaranteed Stare Down every single turn but it banishes the card as well, so uh, this helps kind of you know keep that hand uh, disruption going on throughout uh, the early mid game, and then once we get up to four, you just do it every turn. It's ridiculously strong. Uh, of course, I mean, stare down's just good. It's good. It fits in here pretty well, and we like having it. One copy of Villainous Energy Sphere. Uh, we like having a, a little bit more of a reactive card in here, especially with certain events becoming uh, you know, really strong and really, really effective. We want to prevent our own hands from getting disrupted. And uh, running more than one in here is a little counterintuitive to the win con. We want uh, those extra anger cards, we want those extra tech cards. And we don't need them quite as much right now because outside of Unleash, there aren't a ton of events really being slung around. And of course, this can be used to stop time or a hand disruption card or uh, opposing events, whatever they may end up being. But it's not mega, mega strong. Uh, and we only need the one as it is, so it works perfectly fine there. And of course, time is a warrior's tool. That is what that is we already know. Next, we're going to move into the physical combat cards. Uh, and a lot of the cards are in here either for gaining immediate anger, or they're in here for some kind of additional effect. Uh, now, all of these attacks, regardless of the minimal amount of damage they're going to do because of Mercenary Tau's low power level, are going to be effective once we get off level 1. Because level 2, every attack guarantees that we're destroying a card off the top of our opponent's life deck. And at level 4, we guarantee that they are banished. Uh, plus, once you get to 3, your opponent's going to kind of question if they actually want to block any of those attacks. Because, you know, sure, they're not going to do a whole lot of damage, uh, but maybe they want to get a benefit off of one of their own blocks. But once they block it, uh, it banishes the card from your opponent's life deck. And that's especially true with some of the stronger offensive cards here. So that way you're still guaranteeing damage, which is just phenomenal. Just phenomenal. It's one of the reasons I really, really like Mercenary Tau in here. So uh, we start off with three copies of Red Double Strike, uh, two anger card, uh, pretty much guaranteed. It's not going to do a lot of damage, but we want to get to the higher levels with this. Uh, and that's the point, so you're going to be able to mill two once you're on level two, uh, mill, banish two when you're on level four. Um, if your opponent still does block it for whatever reason it may be, uh, on any level, you're going to get a benefit. Level 1, you rejuvenate 1. Level 2, you're still uh, you know, dealing damage. Level 4, you're still dealing damage. Level 3, you're still dealing damage. So it's super useful for that. And it's going to make your opponent really question you know, exactly what they want to block or if they want to block or if they even kind of want to get rid of it even though they know it's going to do very, very minimal damage, which is one thing I like about it in this deck. And a lot of the attacks in this deck are honestly. It's one thing I like, is it makes your opponent really, really weigh on their options. Next, three copies of Red Tandem Attack. Uh, this is really, really powerful right now because of all of the decks that are drawing into additional cards, uh, particularly Goku. We want the ability to draw 
uh, into some of those extra cards. Uh, it's very, very easy to see hands are loaded with five or more cards, uh, even more so since Black Smoothness Drill came off of the restricted list and is now back to three copies, considering that was only for the OP season. So uh, it's decent amount of damage. It has two extra endurance on it for each copy, so that's great. Uh, it, it's here mainly for that additional attack. Of course, with none of these attacks, you're really trying to deal out damage, unless there's some of the bigger cards, which you're going to see here very, very soon. Two copies of Red Mule Kick. Uh, we do like being able to banish attached cards, especially considering how popular they are right now. And we do have attached cards in here of our own that we can banish uh, just away and you know get rid of them from our opponent. So, uh, I mean, while we don't get to really use the critical damage effect off of it, unless we banish one of our own cards, uh, it's still useful enough as it is. The extra endurance is also nice. Uh, so it's, it's in here for that additional little something-something. Two copies of Red Driving Knee. I did originally have Red Knee Lift in here for the immediate critical damage effect, uh, but it, and it was nice for that but it also didn't really do too much else outside of it, especially considering Rage is gone. So instead we're using Driving Knee. It's got one guaranteed anger. If it hits, we use a critical damage effect. And as long as we gain stages, we gain another anger off of it because we've gained stages this combat. So it's a guaranteed, almost guaranteed two anger if it hits. And your opponent's really gonna question if they want to block an attack for two stages. Like, why? Why would you really, really want to block that? Do you really want to work that hard at trying to, you know, force me to not gain anger? I mean, okay, you're just wasting extra block out of your hand. It's a really cool card to put your opponent in a catch-22 kind of situation, and that's what I really like about it. Along with that, we have two copies of Sinister Choke. Uh, this is mainly in here because of the level 2 and the level 3, which guarantee some attacks going through. Plus, it's a guaranteed crit if it hits, uh, it's life card damage, and we like being able to deal that out, especially an attack that's going to deal such meager AT damage. And two copies of Sagacious Strike. Again, another kind of forgotten card at the moment, especially with the loss of Enraged. Uh, but this is here for another guaranteed critical damage effect. Uh, we can guarantee it to go through without having to utilize level 2 or level 3 powers to do any of that. Uh, it's got the crit, so we have that extra tech in there. Helps get rid of Wall Breaker, helps us capture our Dragon Balls back. It speaks for itself. Along with that, of course, we need to have blocks. We need to have them, especially since Mercenary Tao's power level is really, really low, and he's just going to eat a ton of damage. So we want to be able to block those super powerful physicals, especially if physical beats remains in vogue with decks like Brawly and Goku and Gohan and Trunks. And you see where this is going. So we have three copies of Red Blocking Hand. Uh, it's practically necessary in here. Two Anger, two Stages. Uh, it fits with some of the cards like Red Driving Knee that work when we gain stages. Um, we like two Anger cards. We do. It's got a lack of Endurance, which is a little bit of a downer compared to all of the other blocks in this deck outside of Time as a Warrior's Tool. But it does more than enough to just really make it worthwhile to have in here. And two copies of Red Duck. Uh, this is in here for the Rejuvenation, because we need to get those extra cards back into the life deck. Uh, that and there weren't really any other super great options to kind of fit in here. You could run Red Resourceful Block, and you could, you know, do the level hopping thing. But he's not an MP that really, really wants to level hop. Uh, the benefit of being able to Rejuvenate in Red certainly outweighed the benefit of being able to level hop in an MP that's not truly going to take advantage of it. So that's why that is in there. And of course, lastly, we need to have energy combat cards because Red's got really, really good energy cards in here. I like them a lot. And of course, if we're going to be talking about Red energy cards, we have to start with three copies of Red Static Shot. Being able to shut off your opponent's endurance is really, really strong, especially considering just how much uh, really good endurance there is out there, especially in the current game. You see a lot of blue decks have high endurance. Orange decks can have really high endurance. Uh, Saiyan decks have really high endurance. Shutting that off is mad powerful. Plus if it hits, uh, you've got a guaranteed 5 life going through, guaranteed crit, gain 2 anger. Um, that's easy to get through on level 2 because your opponent's going to debate blocking your power for one life card. And if it hits, you can throw a static shot, guaranteed 5, guaranteed 2 anger. Everything is peachy. This is just a fantastic card. and also works well with a lot of the other attacks we've gotten here that are styled. 
along with that, three copies of Red Trailing Blast. Uh, this is mainly for additional actions because Tao wants to make a lot of those extra actions. Tao wants to throw out attacks uh, and either force an opponent to block and get a benefit out of them or just deal outright damage, uh, which he can easily do on the two and fours I've mentioned many, many times and I will continue to. Uh, so Trailing Blast lets us do that. Because we want to level quickly, we can take that, bounce it right back to our hand. We can throw it out uh, and it either hits or it uh, deals mill damage, whatever it might be. Uh, of course, we don't have Unleashed in here, so it's not being used in an attached target, but you can bluff that against opponents. You can actually get Trailing Blast out and you can make your opponent think, is this Unleashed? He could have that. I need to be a lot more careful about mine. I'm going to wait for him to unleash. And then by the time they realize that you're actually an anger variant, you know, it could be too late. So that's fantastic there. Uh, lastly, we have for our styled ones, two copies of Red Downward Burst. Uh, this is a card that was kind of forgotten out of uh, perfection because not a whole lot of red decks were utilizing uh, attached cards that they necessarily needed at the time. Uh, and even when Unleashed came around, you still had attached cards that you know you weren't really getting off because you were running attached cards in decks like Brawly, where you want to level fast and you only really needed them for a one-time use. In this case, we do actually have a couple of attached cards that we want to utilize, and Downward Burst helps us get those back if they are either destroyed or banished. So that's a really, really nice benefit there, uh, especially when you consider one of Tao's name cards as an attached card. So we want to be able to get those back. We want to stick our opponents with them. On, on top of this, it's still a two for five energy. We do gain an extra anger off of it, even if you don't use it for the lo uh, anger lowering effect to get an attached card back you're still getting anger in a relatively decent attack. It's it, it's nifty, it really is, and it's something I think's been overlooked for a little while and could actually see a comeback as long as attached cards are still a really popular thing. Along with that, we have to have some non-styles in here, starting with three copies of Optic Blast. If we're running Dragon Balls, we need to have Optic Blast in here in order to get some of them back. Uh, this works super well on level two and level three, or we can guarantee it goes through. The extra endurance is nice, the heavy damage is nice. Um, we do get to draw a card whenever we capture one of these Dragon Balls. Uh, it's, it may not be the mill three that we had out of Namek Dragon Balls, and that may actually be an incentive to run Namek Dragon Balls in the future over Earth Dragon Balls, but there's tons of incentive to run in here, and it's really, really good. And two copies of Mercenary Tau's Super Dodon Ray. Now, this is why Red Downward Burst is in here. Sure, we have Trailing Blast, but Dodon Ray is a really, really strong attached card. Either your opponent loses a block or banishes the top card of their life deck, so it's a guaranteed card down, no matter what. Very, very effective. Uh, I mean, you know, it's not a lot of damage. It's one life card. Yeah, that's not going to be great, but that is not why it's here. Not only that, but it's an attached card with a detached clause that doesn't go to the discard pile. Instead, it goes to the top of your life deck, so you can just keep recycling it and recycling it. And if you manage to get both of them attached, your opponent could be losing two cards a turn. Whether it's from their hand or whether it's from the top of their life deck, very, very effective. Uh, and it helps further along the uh, kind of beat down the survival win con, which is something that players aren't really going to expect. And if they don't manage to deal critical damage, it will wear them down over the course of the game. Of course, we also need to have energy blocks, and that's going to be the last of everything in the deck. Three copies of Red Energy Defensive Stance, two Endurance, one Anger. It's solid. It's really, really solid. Uh, it's very... It's just in here because we like Anger. Anger is good in this deck, so we gotta have it in here. And two copies of Red Evade. Now, this is a block that I kind of weighed on a little bit, whether I want to actually utilize it. And the main reason it's in here is because Unleashed is so popular right now that a lot of times your opponent will be at a higher level than you. So that's an extra two anger that's guaranteed out of here. Uh, any chance to gain that much anger is great. We like the two anger. We like that. Uh, that's why we've got static shot in here. It's part of why I've got driving in here, blocking hand. And this is another card that helps us do that. Of course, it may not always go off, but it's two extra endurance. It's still an energy block. Uh, it's just got a great benefit to it, especially if you're facing off against some of those unleashed decks that like to level really, really fast. So that is it for the deck. And it's something 
I really wanted to try doing was getting a little bit out of the comfort zone, uh, trying something new, trying something people hadn't really looked at before, and uh, giving it a little bit of a consideration with some of the prior ideas that have been around, especially for red. Uh, you know, red has had you know kind of ups and downs to it, uh, just a lot. There wasn't really much focus for it in the first couple of sets, uh, and then it really got its idea around it about about the time of the movie collection. It started uh, started taking off a little bit more, and then Evolution came out, tossed it on its head, uh, and it went into two separate camps. On uh, you know after a while it. It got back to where it needed to be, both with Ruthless and with Enraged. And it had that with personalities, it had that with deck ideas, with styles and whatnot. And I feel like Ascension hasn't quite gotten there yet. Ascension doesn't have everything it needs, and it probably won't have it for the next set or two. But there's at least an idea to kind of get all that together, kind of give it an approach that might actually work. Um, while this one may be a lot riskier with the mastery's inherent value, it does give you extra options and it can really surprise your opponents who aren't quite prepared for it. So, it's something I've been wanting to try. It's something I'm fairly pleased with, and I hope it's something that you guys will try out, whether it's trying to build something with the Ascension Mastery, or trying to build something with Tau, or just trying out this deck in general. So that is going to do it for this edition of Bad Builds. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to click that like button down below. Give us your thumbs, give us your love. I would love to see them. If not, click the dislike button and let me know what you guys didn't like down in the comment section. So that way I can improve it for future episodes. I am definitely not kidding about this one. If you guys didn't like something, please just tell me. It's not going to offend me. I've got thick skin. It's perfectly fine. Just let me know and I will improve on it. Seriously, guys. Uh, also, if you guys haven't hit that subscribe button down below, please be sure to do so so that you can follow this series and all of our other series that we've got going on. Now, morning matchups just started earlier this week, uh, and that's going to be going on consistently throughout, you know, for a while. I don't know when it's going to stop. I don't know if it's going to stop, but we're just trying to get some matchups up, so be sure to check all of that out. Of course, we have Xenoverse 2 going on. Uh, we've got a couple of other things waiting in the wings, so be sure to keep an eye out for all of those. And lastly, if you guys haven't found us on social media, those links are down below too. So you guys can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Libsyn. So be sure to check all those out. Uh, check our latest podcast. We will have one coming out on Monday featuring world champion Sandeep Kudumbaka. So be sure to check that out when it comes out. On all the other social media links, just come say hey. We'd love to interact with you guys. So that's going to do it for this episode. I'm Eric with Team Badman signing out. So thank you guys for watching. And like always... Stay bad. We'll see you guys next time. Catch you later.